Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. This is Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect. Today we're going to be looking at Azure DevOps as it relates to Azure App Services. Today we're going to be looking at Azure DevOps as it relates to Azure App Services. Now we're not only going to scratch the surface on Azure DevOps because it's a very rich tool and I might do a series in the future on Azure DevOps and everything it does on Tech on Fire, but today we're just going to show you how to set up a quick build and release pipeline on Azure DevOps for app services. Now, Azure DevOps is a tool for managing projects. It provides you a lot of project management features such as boards for managing sprints, tasks, bug releases. It does everything that you need for managing code. So you can have Git repos, you can have versioning against those Git repos, and it has all the security features baked into it so that you can not only manage the security as it relates to code, but also have things like gated check-ins, security as it relates to pull requests, or security as it relates to who can do builds and who can do releases and all of the things that go into that. So there's a lot there in Azure DevOps that you can set up and customize for your liking depending on your project management style and your organization's requirements. But we're going to focus mainly on pipelines today. And these pipelines are the automation tools in Azure DevOps. And these are designed for builds, tests, and deployments. We're focusing on builds and deployments today, and we're not looking at tests. But the tests, the pipelines, you can integrate with builds and deployments and get a full blown pipeline from checking a code into a repository all the way through deploying that into a production environment with everything in between and have it all automated using Azure DevOps. In a previous video, we looked at how you could use app services with integration with something like GitHub to do deployments. We're specifically focusing on DevOps today. So the story looks similar to that, except it's going to involve DevOps. Now, we would imagine that we have a local repository on our local dev environment, and we're working in some IDE, maybe it's Visual Studio Code, maybe it's Visual Studio, maybe it's something written in Java. But regardless, you have that code and it's on your local box, you have it working and compiling, everything looks good, and you want to push that to your repo. And that's hosted on Azure DevOps. So then you do a get push after you do your commit, and then that code gets checked in to your get repo. Now with Azure DevOps, what you can do is trigger a build based on what gets pushed into that repo. Now there's a lot of ways to do this. Sometimes it's done by pushing into the master branch, or sometimes it can be done by way of a pull request into the master branch. So you have a developer that checks it into a, a development branch that he's working on or she's working on, and then they submit a pull request and then somebody that can administer that pull request goes in and then takes that pull request and merges that into the master branch then which then triggers a build against that master branch so it could be done by way of checking code in or pull request against that master branch or any other branch for that matter and then that code goes from a master branch to a build pipeline now that build pipeline will take the code from the repo and then check it out and then it's going to build that so it's going to convert the code into a binary of some kind and then that binary now is ready for deployment so the next thing that the pipeline will do is take that binary and put it into some form that can be deployed so in the case of a web app that might be just a zip file and it puts it into a pipeline output basically a drop folder on azure devops so that 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 particular build can be picked up by release pipelines now Release pipelines can be triggered any number of ways too. They can be triggered manually on a timer, or they can be triggered as the output of a build so that anytime a build actually fires, it can also trigger the subsequent release pipeline that's waiting on output from a particular build pipeline. So then that build pipeline um, triggers the release pipeline, which then picks up the drop from the build pipeline, and it then will do something with it. Now, it might do 
just simply unzip that and then FTP it to a server. But in the case of Azure DevOps, what it's probably going to end up doing is doing a web deploy using the Azure CLI or some tool like that. And it's going to take that binary and then push that up to app services. And then that application will then be running on Azure app services. I'm here inside of Visual Studio and I'm looking at a sample project that I used in a previous video that basically does arithmetic. And this project is very minimal, so it's trivial code, but it does illustrate what I'm trying to show here. Now, I've connected this particular project to Azure DevOps. So if I look at my um, connections here, I have my Blaze Apps Visual Studio at common. I have Math API as a repo on my uh, instance of Azure DevOps, and I, I set this up when it was called visualstudio.com and uh, Visual Studio Online uh, for doing DevOps before they rebranded it to Azure DevOps, so it's still got that visualstudio.com extension uh, at the end of it, but otherwise it's Azure DevOps. And I've got this set up to connect to this, so if I went down here to manage connections, I could add in a connection and then sync my code with whatever's inside of Azure DevOps, and we're gonna go through that process after I set up my build pipelines. So with my code already here, I have already done a push to Azure DevOps. So everything here is up to date on my repo, which is inside of DevOps. So if I come over here to re repos, here's that project that I was just looking at in Azure uh, inside of Visual Studio, and now it's on Azure DevOps. And this is where I'm going to base my builds off of. So with these repositories in mind, I'm gonna come down here to pipelines and I'm going to add a build pipeline here, and that's what I wanna do for the build right here. So I'm gonna create a build pipeline, and it's gonna ask me where I'm gonna get this from, and I'm gonna say Azure Git Repos, and there's my Math API. Now this pre-populated it, pre-populated this build pipeline with a YAML file, and this is how you define these build pipelines inside of your Azure DevOps environment. Now, this is a YAML file that basically does some basic tasks. So it's saying, what's the trigger here? It's the master branch of my repository, so that's what's going to trigger this build pipeline. I'm, I'm setting a variable here called build configuration, and I wanna use a release configuration rather than a debug because I'm targeting my production quote unquote environment. Um, and the next things define some steps and tasks that are related to this pipeline. This next step is actually what does the build itself. It does a .NET restore, which is basically downloading some NuGet packages and putting those into the repository on the, the actual build agent that's gonna be running this. And then this is actually what calls the build. So it does a .NET build uh, with the release configuration and um, the display name is a .NET build with the display configuration. Um, and once this completes right here, it does two more tasks. The first one is actually write the the build out to an output boulder uh, using the uh, the .NET Core publish here. So I want to out take that the configuration build right here and publish this using .NET. And so it's going to call .NET publish and then you know, release configuration and then output that to the artifact staging directory. And then this task down here will actually take that output from this and then put it into a container that can be used for releases. So once I have this, I'm going to hit save because I know this works because I've run it before. And I'm gonna come down here to releases and this is where I'm going to build my release pipeline. So I'm gonna hit new pipeline here. And in this stage, I'm going to select over here from one of the templates, Azure App Service Deployment. I'm gonna hit apply. And this one is going to say, who's my, who's the owner of this? And I'm gonna say, I am, that's fine. And this is stage one. So I'm gonna come in here and, and configure stage one of this particular release pipeline. And I'm going to select Blaze App Services Connection. And I'm going to say Web App for Windows, which is fine. And then I'm going to select the app service name that I wanna deploy this to. So it's called Blaze dash app demo, which I've already built on Azure. And I'm not gonna go through the process of showing you how to do that, but basically it's an existing app service that you can use. And I've already configured the um, 
Azure subscription. So if you want to do that, you could click manage here and then that's how you connect Azure DevOps to Azure using the manage tool here. So once I have those defined, I can get out of this and then I can, you know, save this and um, come over here and that saves it step one. And I'm come back over here to pipelines and then I'm going to set up the actual artifact that will trigger this. <clears throat> So basically, I want to get the output from a build. So uh, I'm going to select Math API, and I'm going to select this, uh, select the Math API, and then I'm going to take the latest version and the source alias, which would be Math API here. I, there's no build API that, that's published anything yet, but in any case, this is will be populated once I actually do run a build. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as the source the uh, for this and that's the artifacts that are dropped upon my build pipeline so once i have that i'm going to configure the trigger here and i'm going to do enable trigger when a new release as every time a new bu a build is available or i can do it based on a pull request trigger i'm going to select this first one because that's the one i want to fire whenever my build pipeline is finished so basically whenever my build pipeline runs this pipeline will get triggered and then deploy it to Azure. So with that, I can close this out and save it. And now my build pipeline and my release pipeline are defined. So if I wanted to go ahead and run this, I could come down here and hit, uh, come into this and hit run pipeline and uh, choose the branch I want to use and so on. And then I'm gonna click run and this will run. So we'll come back when this finishes. Okay, now that my my pipelines have run, I can go back and review these pipelines. So here's the build pipeline that ran, and it will show me the last run on it, and I can come down and drill into the tasks that were running on this, and shows me every, all, all the output that came back from the agent that actually did the build. And once the build is finished, it gets handed off to the release pipeline, and here I could have my release pipeline, and it will show you the steps that were uh, run here as well. So I can come back here and look at the job initialize, downloaded the, the artifact that was the build output, and then deployed it to App Service and then finalized the job. So this is my full, full, uh, fully run App Service output. Now I can go back in and make some changes to this and then check those in. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to change something down here, maybe a trivial change, but it will, it will cause a difference in the code so it says only uh, i could do something like only uh, chuck norris can divide by by zero and then i'm going to save this and then i'm going to check it in so to do that i'm going to come over here to my solution explorer and um, i'm going to go ahead and commit this and then once I've committed it, I'm going to put in Chuck Norris for the comment. And I'm going to go ahead and commit this. And then I'm going to go click on sync here. And I'm going to do a push to my source code repository. So now I've actually done a push of a change file, which is this one down here, to Azure DevOps. Now, if I come back down here to Azure DevOps, I should be able to see my build now that is running because this was triggered by Chuck Norris because that new push is now running. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and then we will uh, see what happens whenever this is finished. Now that my build and release have run, I can go back and again look at my pipelines and I can say you know, what, what did run here. So if I come back here, here's my new release that just ran. And this is the latest release that got pushed back to my uh, app service environment. But I can also look at my review, my builds as well. So here's the, the Chuck Norris build, and I can go through and look at the steps. This is, it shows me the diff there that I changed. And then if I want to go back into and actually look at the, the, the steps in the uh, job, I can look at the 
initialize job, the checkout, the, the command line build process, the deployment process, and so on. And then I can go back and review the release steps as well and look at these. So now that this is actually up on app, app services, let's go to the portal and we can um, log in and see this and see if we actually can see what's going on with it. So that's my app service right here. And if I pull this up, I can go over here and pull up the API and I'm gonna run some um, uh, error exceptions on this so that I can see that exception show up in App Insights, which I actually have running against this. So I'm gonna go math, divide uh, one by zero, and this should give me an exception, but in the, the logs for this, it should show me that Chuck Norris can only divide by zero. So I'm gonna run this a few times and then have that exception show up a bunch inside of app services app insights so that i can get an idea of the change that i actually made inside of my code now i'm back in azure app insights for my azure web uh, app that i'm running in app services here and here you can see the spike of requests that came in and this is a spike of requests that i just initiated for this particular web app and this one should have the exception that i'm looking for so if i select these right here these are all the requests that I just did with that divide by zero error. Now, if I come into the count here, I, I ran it a bunch, but like 37 times, I guess. And if I come into my an instance of this, I can then go and look at the actual data as it relates to what I did. Uh, so I have math divide by zero. That was the actual thing I read. Now, if I click on exception, it should show me the error. So there's the error that I put into the code. Only Chuck Norris can divide by zero. So now you can see here that I was able to use a change in my code, push that to Azure DevOps, and then trigger a build, and then trigger a release, and then go all the way through to production. And then they actually have App Insights pick up that change and show it as an exception. So this is an end-to-end -end demo showing you everything that you can do with App Services. It's a very quick demo, but there's a lot more that can go on with this. But at the end of the day, setting up a build pipeline for an app from code to deployment using Azure DevOps is a very enticing because of all the features that Azure DevOps offers when it comes to doing DevOps. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.